Good. Who is it? Poor Burke Simpson, rest his soul. There was no need to bother you, Marshal. My friend died of natural causes. What natural causes? Too much liquor and a weak heart, I'm afraid. Probably. Over here. Acute alcoholism with congestive heart failure. Should give you something to think about, Holiday. Yeah. I feel sorry for his daughter. The girl will take it hard. What with her approaching marriage and all. Mr. Mackey, were you going over to the jail? I'll tell Mr. Gibbs to find Miss Leona Simpson. She'll have to take over things. Yes, sir. Doc, come here. Take a look at his neck. What do you make of it? You mean that puncture? Looks like a needle mark, doesn't it? Sure does. Well, what does that mean? That Mackey's theory was wrong. He didn't die a drink. He was murdered. In the Tombstone, Arizona of 1881, murder was not one of the subtle arts. The usual murder victim was either shot or stabbed in the back. But Tombstone had one killer who devised a different technique, and it was up to Marshall Earp to catch this wily criminal before he himself became a victim. old man Simpson was poisoned. If you want to poison a man, you don't have to use a needle. Then what was the needle for? He put air into an artery or a vein with it. That's what Dr. Goodfellow says. What would that do? Well, the victim was dead in about one minute. Doctor, your uh, post-mortem showing it? Yes. My theory was right. The air bubble caused a block in circulation and death. I wonder why the murderer chose such a complicated way. To fool Wyatt into thinking the death was a natural one? Well, whoever it was went to an awful lot of trouble for nothing. He's already made his first mistake. He'll make another. That's right. It generally do. Do you have anything to go on, Wyatt? Just that Mr. Simpson didn't care for the young man that was courting his daughter. Well, it's a lead for what it's worth. Simpson. I'm sorry about your father. We'll do everything we can to help. Thank you. You feel well enough to answer a few questions? Yes, sir. Won't you sit down? I understand you're engaged to Mr. Hal Babcock the foreman of the Bonanza Mine. Did your father like him? No. But Hal understood. Papa wasn't himself. He, he was drinking a lot, you know. Did your father ever threaten him? Please, Marshal. I can't talk anymore now. All right. Come on, I'll let Mr. Gibbs take you. I don't understand this, Marshal. You act like old man Simpson was murdered. He was. And you think I killed him? Mr. Babcock, we're investigating his death. Now let's take a look inside, shall we? If you tell me what you're looking for, I'll help you find it. I don't own a gun. There's a knife in that drawer. There's an axe over here. There's some rope outside. Doc. Where'd you get it? 
I never saw that thing before. And how did it get in your trunk? Well, I don't know. It's not mine. Wait a minute. Has that got something to do with Mr. Simpson's death? Where were you last night, Mr. Babcock? I don't have to tell you that. I said, where were you? I don't have to tell you anything, and I won't. All right, then you're under arrest. You know, Doc, I think we got the wrong man. Al Babcock couldn't find an artery with a hard rock drill. You're right, Deacon. Now tell me why he doesn't give himself an alibi. I think we better go ask Miss Leone some more questions. Let me do the asking. I'm not as chivalrous as you are. Miss Leone, do you know you have quite a reputation in Tombstone? I do. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? In the last year, you've had more dates and men calling on you than any three women in the county. Oh, I suppose I have. Oh, there are quite a few theories about your popularity. Perhaps you have one of your own? What are you trying to say, Dr. Holliday? That people gossip about you. You mean they think I'm bad? Are they wrong? They most certainly are, and so are you. Now, you please get out of my house. I'm sorry, Miss Lane. I'm sure the doc didn't mean any offense. Well, I'm sure he did. I have nothing more to say, Marshal. That isn't going to help Babcock much. Help him? Mr. Uh, Babcock isn't being too cooperative. He won't tell us where he was last night. Last night? You mean you think he killed my father? Can you tell us where he was? Yeah, he was with me. Well, now, why didn't he tell us that? I don't know. Miss Leon, who were the other men before you became engaged? Oh, He's oh, off, no. Doc. Miss Leon, I think you need some rest. You've been under quite a strain. We'll leave you now. Thank you. Goodbye. Doc? <laughs> Gibbs, bring Mr. Babcock out. Yes, sir. Doc, you find out who bought this hypodermic. Check with Dr. Goodfellow and the drugstore. What about that girl? You stay away from her. I'll handle it my own way. Mr. Babcock, I'm not going to hold you any longer, but I hope that you'll answer me one question before you go. Well, that depends on what it is. I want to know the names of the other men who courted Miss Leon Simpson. I can't answer that, Marshal. Why not? Well, let's say I have plans. What kind of plans? I might even solve the murder for you. Oh? Somebody put that hypodermic needle in my trunk, figuring you'd find it and arrest me. You realize, don't you, that whoever killed Mr. Simpson is very dangerous? I'll be real careful. Mr. Babcock, at least you've been warned. Thank you. Follow him. Well, he's a real sure enough smart aleck. He's going to solve the murder for it. His first logical move would be to go after the man he thinks framed him. He's going to get himself killed, too. He ain't even got a gun. He can buy one. You keep after him. Simpson. I understand he got some bad liquor. Yeah, they didn't get it in here. Gibbons, I want you. Turn around. I said turn around. Give me that. Give me that. Well, he 
draw me first. Shoulder wound, lad. It ain't bad. What happened? Well, it's like the boy says. You draw him first. Get him over to Dr. Goodfellow. Lord, say this is Tom Gibbons. Is it mortal? Nope. Just a shoulder wound. Well, I got a spring wagon outside. We'll haul him in back. Good idea, Mackie. Now, easy. Easy, Doug. Mr. Babcock, you bought this gun with the intention of killing Mr. Gibbons. You came here for that purpose. Why? Marshal, Gibbons killed Mr. Simpson. And he tried to frame me for it. Why would he do that? Well, you'll have to ask Leon. She'll have to tell you that. All right. I'll talk to her again. In the meantime, you stay close. Marshal. What about Gibbons? It's my business, not yours. Are you sure Hal's all right? Not a scratch on him. But he may be prosecuted for assault. Because he shot Mr. Gibbons? Well, that's unfair. Why? He was jealous of Hal. Mr. Gibbons used to call on me until my father put a stop to it. Now, why didn't you tell me that earlier today? I didn't think it mattered. Did your father ever threaten Mr. Gibbons? When Papa had too much to drink, he threatened everybody who even came near me. Papa didn't trust people. He was just terrible to everyone. Terrible? Yes, he'd shout and yell and he'd just chase them all away. I hated him for it. Why was he so violent about it? I don't know. I suppose it's because he was afraid I'd get married. Since Mama died, he never wanted to be alone. He didn't want me to leave home. I see. I talked to Mr. Mackey about it. The stable man? Papa liked him. He, he tried to make him understand, but it just didn't work. Mr. Mackey was my only friend for a long time. What about your fiance, Hal Babcock? Did your father threaten him, too? Hal was the only one Papa couldn't run off. He used to come right up to the house. Papa didn't like that, either. Told Hal straight out he'd kill him. Thank you. Marshal, are, are you going to arrest Hal? No. Hi, Doc. What? I heard young Babcock shot Tom Gibbons. Yeah, he thinks Gibbons murdered Leon's father and tried to put the blame on him. Plausible. But you don't believe it either. Hmm? There was bad blood between Gibbons and Babcock. Dr. Goodfellow isn't missing a syringe, and the druggist hasn't sold one lately. Neither of them uh, recognize this one? They don't keep records, wise. Well, let's go on over and talk to Mr. Gibbons. Doc? What? Where's Mr. Gibbons? In the hospital room. Can we see him? Well, he's pretty weak. He's lost a lot of blood, but I don't see why not. Don't stay too long. Tom? Tom. Tom, wake up. Back to Goodfellow. Back to Goodfellow. He's dead. He's dead. Look. It's the same technique, Why? That's what I thought. I want a post-mortem. I could use your help. Well, it was murder. Definitely. No question at all. We're dealing with a monster. How many people were here when uh, Mr. Gibbs brought him in? Oh, a dozen, maybe 15. I didn't count them. 
The outside door and back was open. I mean, it could be anybody. I still think that girl knows more than she's told you. You suspect Leon? I grant you the needlework isn't feminine, Doctor. But from what I found out, Leon had plenty of trouble with her father and some with Mr. Gibbons. Well, we know that Simpson didn't like Gibbons. We know that Mr. Babcock didn't like either one of them. Maybe we're being too logical. Maybe our murder isn't at all logical. Well, logical or not, he might go right on killing. I think you're right. Now, Miss Leon, I want the name of every man who ever called on you. I thought you were my friend. Look, your father is dead, and now Mr. Gibbons is dead. Al could be next, and then you, and then one of those other men. Or well, one of us, why? Mr. Mackey. I heard you was here. Now, what's happening here? Mr. Mackey, they want to know the names of everyone who came to see me. Now, the old. Marshal Earp's just doing what we pay him to do. Well, I can't help that. There's enough gossip already. And Hal won't like it either. He'll get jealous. Now, how, what's he got to be jealous about? Heh. <laughs> he knew plenty of girls before he met you. I don't intend to make the names public. Now, you've done nothing disgraceful. Now, you just step right up. You tell Marshal Earp whatever he wants to know. All right, I'll, I'll write the names down. Good girl. There's pencil and paper. Hey, by the way, Mr. Mackey, you're uh, sort of a horse doctor, aren't you? Well, there's considerable difference of opinion on that. Of course, I can drench a horse or fix a saddle sore, but... Did you ever use a hypodermic needle? Me? What for? Mr. Simpson died in your stable last night, and the day you took Mr. Gibbons over to Dr. Goodfellow's in your wagon. And you were still there when I left to find Wyatt. You seem awfully friendly with everybody. Well, Burke Simpson and Tom Gibbons were friends of mine. What is this, anyway? Ah, uh, <laughs> you're joshing me, huh, Marshal? No, you had the opportunity. To kill two good friends of mine. Now, what would I want to do that for? Nobody said you'd done it. Well, I... I don't even know how they died. Doc here said something about a hypo syringe. Not a syringe. I said needle. Well, it's the same thing, ain't it? Did, uh, Burke and Tom die of poisoning, you think? Here are the names. Thank you. Is even Mr. Mackey suspected? Well, it kind of looks that way, child. Now, if you're aiming to put me under arrest, Marshal, I would appreciate it if you'd give me time to do my night feeding and bedding down first. Marshal Earp, this is ridiculous. First Hal and now Mr. Mackey. Why is it ridiculous? Mr. Mackey was the only friend Papa had or even trusted. He was Papa's friend. Now, now, don't rile the law, darling. All I'm asking is a chance to feed my horses and hire a relief man. I won't keep you, Mr. Mackey. Now, you're being real sensible, Marshal. Come along, Leona. I'll take you home. I'm trusting you with that list, Marshal. Well, sir? It's a mighty fidgeting puzzle. Why, it could have been, Mackey. Yeah, he made one slip. Said syringe instead of needle. That means he knows something about hypodermics. And it was too innocent the way he asked about that poison. But why would he want to kill them fellers? Looks more to me like Babcock done it. There's that girl too, Gibbs. Yeah, that's the point. Well, I'm going to check out this list. Maybe one of them will give me a motive. We better go with you, huh? No. She gave me this in confidence. Mr. Gibbs, you go on patrol. Doc, you go on back to the hotel. Gibbs, we got a big job to do. You go over to Simpson's place. Now I'll go over to Mackey's stable. Doc, we're gambling on Wyatt's life. Wrong. Wyatt gambled on his own life when he went out that door. Jack Gray? That's right. Is there something wrong, Marshal? No, 
I'm trying to get some information on uh, Mr. Mackey, the stableman. Well? When you and Miss Leone were seeing each other, did uh, anything happen that involved Mr. Mackey? <laughs> yes, it did. He talked Leone's father out of shooting at me. Mr. Mackey and uh, Mr. Simpson were friends? Oh, sure. They got drunk together almost every night. How about Mr. Mackey and Mr. Gibbons? They're very good friends, as far as I know, Marshal. Mr. Mackey's friends with everybody. Say, you don't think he had anything to do with Mr. Simpson and Gibbons being killed? Well, I've probably done Mr. Mackey an injustice. I'll go see him. Thank you. Take it easy and keep your mouth shut. That's right. Drop it on the floor. Take your finger off the trigger. That's right. Just easy. That's right. Now the other one. Where I can see, if you don't mind. Easy now. That's right. I got to do this, Marshal. I can't let you arrest me. He was getting too smart. You figured it was me that killed Bert, didn't you? Well, you're right, I did. But Leon's precious Hal is gonna hang for it, and Gibbons. And now they'll think he killed you. You're not to be trusted, Marshal. Like I couldn't trust Burke at all. He should have been glad I wanted to marry his daughter. I told him I loved her dear. But he wouldn't listen. Wouldn't listen at all, even though we were friends. He said he'd kill me just the same. But he didn't, did he? Now hold still! I did him a favor. He would have resented being hanged. I know it may sound foolish to you, but John really does want to quit, Mr. Clatton. He's planning to move to California. You think you can make a good man out of a killer, an honest man out of a thief? If he loves me enough, I can. And I'll tell you something else. John hasn't had a drink since we met. Well, habits are one thing, Miss Murray. But temper in a gunfighter, especially Ringo, that's a horse of a different color. I don't care what people say. A man can change if he meets the right girl. I don't necessarily say it has to be me. Any, any nice girl who really loves him. You think I'm a romantic fool, don't you? No, I don't. I think you make a uh, good, sensible Irish stew. Where's Ringo now? 
At this ranch near Galeyville, why? It's not important. But it is important. It sounds like you're planning to make trouble for John and me. No, I wouldn't do that. I'm hoping for a miracle, too. You mean you won't interfere? Ringo is one of Clanton's top guns. Now, if he moves to California, it'll make me very happy, make my job easier. Thank you for the lunch, Miss Mary. Thank you, Mr. Irv. Passed the law against washing clothes, Herb. No? Not yet. I'm busy. What I have to say won't take much time. I spill it. I know about you and Mary. You ride all the way down here just to tell me that? You in love with her? That's none of your business. Well, let's put it another way. You washing clothes or trying to get your hands clean? Pick a fight with somebody else, sir. No fight for me, but I don't think your brother is going to like it so much. I'll talk him out of it. Ringo, you must be in love. You aiming to marry? Any law against it? No. Listen, Erp. Mary's the finest girl I ever met in my life. I can't expect her to lead this, this kind of life. So I told old man Clanton to do whatever he wanted to. Me, I'm pulling out. With Mary? She'll take the chance. All right. I wish you both luck. I always figured you were too smart to stay a gunfighter, Ringo. With Mary's help, there's a chance you may make it. I don't get it. You and I have been hating each other for a long time, Herb. I don't hate you, Ringle. What do you mean? I'm not sure you built the bottle. You're too quick with your guns. But maybe now you'll learn to control your temper. You make friends with Mary's brother. Try to convince him you're on the level. That shouldn't be too hard. You convince me. It's all over town that my sister has seen Johnny Ringo. Now, will you put that gun... Oh, now, look, Claude, Johnny will be here in just a few minutes, and you can see for yourself, you don't have to protect me from him. Well, for heaven's sakes, he hasn't done anything wrong. Well, he won't get the chance, Mary. He's no good. A Clanton gunslinger, a rustler, a thief, and a killer. Maybe he used to be, Claude, but he's changed. Gunslingers don't change, Mary. Now, you stay away from him, do you hear? I'm not going to let you ruin your life. It's my life. Mary, Mary, what's happened to you? My sister and Johnny Ringo. Now, is that something for a brother to be real proud of? Claude, are you going to let me have it? No. When he shows up, I'm going to kill him. Now, you listen to me. If you don't give me that gun, I'll go and get Marshal Earp. Sure. You do that, Mary. You tell the Marshal. I'll wait for Johnny Ringo. gun for Keep away from my sister. I hope to marry her. She'll have me. Look, I want to be friends with you, Claude. You don't need a gun. Keep away from Mary or I'll kill you. Say it, Ringo. Say it. All right, if that's the way you want it. Just to teach her a lesson. Give me that. Claude? 
Johnny, what happened? I didn't hurt him. We heard two shots. You fired him? Yes. He's a liar. You're not wearing your guns, Ringo. Where'd you get this? That's Claude's gun. You shot it, Ringo? Yes, sir. Why not drop it, Earp? There's a law against shooting at people, Johnny. I'll have to book you, Mr. Turner. I'll go bail for him, Earp. Tomorrow. Come on. Now, don't worry, Mary. The marshal will release him in the morning. I'm so ashamed for him, Johnny. You, you were so generous and kind, and no, he... No, your brother's just a boy. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. Then I think we ought to get married right away. I don't trust my luck. I'm scared. Scared? Yes. I'm scared of myself. What happens when a gun's in my hand? Comes alive. I don't control it, it controls me. But, Johnny, you promised me you wouldn't wear a gun. And I'll keep my promise. But remember, my name's Ringo. You must know what it means. Even your own brother wanted to shoot me on sight. All right, then, Johnny, we'll change the name. We'll forget this time, we'll forget everything. Oh, we can be happy, you'll see. Now, don't brood about it. The past is over and done with. And if you're worried about Claude, don't be. I can make him understand. I know I can. All right, Mary. I know what I'd be in for when I fell in love with you. I want to be just like you want me to be. And I promise you, I'll try. Oh. But we'll have to fight for what we want, the two of us. Fight for it. You think old man Clanton will just let me go with his blessing? If we have a minister say the words and start for California? It won't be that simple. Johnny, it won't be that simple. All right, Johnny, we'll fight for what we want. But please, not with guns. It's a hurry, Ike. Where's Papa? Inside, eating breakfast. All right, tie him up. Papa? Papa, Ring, Ringo just had to run in with Claude Turner. Well, now, ain't that too bad? Killing Mary's own brother. Ooh, ooh that ought to bust it up. Oh, well, well, he ain't dead, Papa. You said Ringo, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't believe it myself, but it's true. Claude took a shot at Johnny Ringo, and then... And then Johnny didn't do a thing to him. And Herp took Claude and he put him in jail. Johnny hung around till midnight with that gal, and then he got on his horse and rode back to Gaileyville. Now, I'm telling you, Papa, he's going to hitch up with that gal. Could be, love. Could be. Well, that ain't all, Papa. Johnny's going to sell out his whole spread, and everybody's telling it around that then he's going to move off to California. Well, he ain't. I need Ringo. He's one of them has got brains in his head. Well, I told uh, Brocious and... And the McClowry's over to Charleston like you told me to, but they, they're keeping their hands off of it. They, they're all scared of Johnny Ringo. Well, ain't you? Well, uh, in a gunfight, sure, but... Well, Papa, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah, I, all, all the way when I was riding down here, I thought that if we... Or we, we could... We could... What ways, I? Well, Papa, you could buy him off. Well, now, I know it'd take a lot of money, but, Papa, you could do it. Joseph Isaac Clanton. You can buy a man off of holding up somebody or killing somebody, but you can't buy a man off of loving somebody. No, I guess, I guess you can't. But ain't it worth trying? Hush up. I'm a studying this. Mary Turner and her brother Claude. Hi. Oh, yes, Papa. Were they real fond of each other? Oh, well, sure they are. Dang fool took a shot at Johnny, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I never had a man work for me as mean as Johnny Ringo is, and he gets killing mad. You go find me four or five saddle trains. 
Now, I want tough boys, and I want boys who ain't ever worked for me before. Yeah, all right, Papa. Well, well, Papa, what are you going to do? I'm going to cool me down a romance. Uh, yeah, Papa. I'm sorry, sis. How much is the bond, Marshal? No bond. I'm turning him loose. He's uh, a lot more sensible this morning. Will you give Johnny a chance, Claude, please? I want you to be happy, Mary. That's all. I know you do. Well, I guess I better tell you about this now. Johnny's asked me to marry him, and I've said yes. If you have any idea of going after him again, you just better keep him locked up, Marshal. Well, Mr. Turner? I guess I was wrong. Maybe Ringo has changed. Oh, he has, Claude. He has. He wants to be your friend. Well, he's going by the mine office at noon to try to talk to you again. Mr. Turner, passing judgment on another man's character is something I've learned to leave up to the good Lord. Wouldn't hurt you to do the same. You're right. Well, it's kind of late. I'd better get over to the mine. I'll see you tonight, Mary. All right. Marshal? Thank you, Marshal. Not at all. When's the wedding? Tomorrow. Will you come? <laughs> I'll be there. Bye. Politely. You wait here, Gus and me will take them. We've got a message for Claude Turner. Oh, for me? Yeah, on your feet. Hey, you just keep quiet. <laughs> Who are you? What do you want with me? We'll explain later, Sonny. Why would someone throw this in here? Well, he must have disappeared into the alley. I don't see him. This is for you. If you want to see your brother alive, you better take the first stage for Colorado. Oh, this must be some sort of a joke. Maybe, but you'd better get it straight to Marshal Earth. Oh, but I... I just don't know what happened. It happened so fast. We were sitting over there, and we were having our lunch, just like we always do. And these four men, they come up, and they grabbed him, and they just took off. I don't know why they won't Paul Turner. He didn't have a scent that I know of. Grabbed him and they, they put him on the horse and they... What's that about Claude Turner? He got kidnapped, Mr. Ringo. Kidnapped? Four men grabbed him. We was eating right over there. These two men came out of the brush with 45s and they dragged him over to the others. They put him on a horse and galloped off. What did they look like? Gunslingers. How long ago? Oh, about 40 minutes. We sent for Marshal Earp. They took him from the contention mine. They probably headed for the mountains. There's only one good trail into the Lazy Creek area. Mr. Earp, will you call in your deputies? Get a posse, do something! Look, do you want your brother alive? Well, the surest way of getting him hurt is to rush those fellows with the posse. Now, it's a one-man job, and I'll be going out there in a few minutes. Well, why are you waiting even minutes? Because old man Clanton is in town. He's not going to help! I'm going to go get John. He'll do something. No. You keep Ringo away from this. He might lose his temper and try to blast him out. Is that what you want? He won't go back to his guns, he promised me. 
You sent for Ringo? No, why? Well, I heard he left contention mine, trailed them saddle tramps. He was killing mad. I suppose you set this up. Being a John Law, you'd have to think that. I got my rig outside and a fair notion where them boys went to. If we was to move quick, we might head Ringo off. That's our only chance. Well, why do you want to stop John? He'll get through to Claude and save him. Judas Priest girl, Ringo's mad. He'll massacre you, them boys, and your brother, too. Once he gets started shooting, he don't care who he kills. Better come along, you can handle Ringo. No time to lose. Now, what's the matter with you? Oh, we ain't poor enough from Tombstone to suit me. Oh, there must be a dozen gullies just like this around here. Herbert have to search them all. Come on, Joe, deal and act like you're brave. For your guns. Zwingo! I said draw! Draw! chance to defend what he did in court. These were kidnappers, Claude. You should realize that four against one are pretty high odds in a gunfight. He faced those odds for you. He could have captured him. Yeah, maybe. Another man might have handled it a different way. But Ringle did the only thing he knew. He 
He's a gunfighter, Mary. Mr. Clanton will use your wagon to take her home. Forget all of this someday. Thanks, Marshal. Right, Charlie. Marshal, he just wants to ask you a few questions. This is my husband, Mr. Whiting. Howdy, Mr. Roberts. Roberts? That's right. No, Ben. Just throw it down there. Desperate men with whom Wyatt Earp had to deal as Marshal of Tombstone, Arizona, some of the most dangerous were professional bank robbers. In 1881, bank robbery attracted Western criminals who ranked themselves with Quantrell, the James Boys, and the Youngers. And a few of them were just as shrewd and deadly as Cole Younger or Jesse James. How's Ben feeling, Sadie? His leg's worse. He wants to talk to you. Yes, sir. Sadie says your uh, leg don't feel so good. Want me to ride into Tombstone and fetch a doctor? No. Sadie and I are going into town alone. All right, Ben, if that's the way you want it, but... Uh, you taking a big risk? Is that any concern of yours? Yeah, in a way it is. What way? You're the last of the Roberts gang. Now, ever since we bumped into you, we've been hoping that... But as soon as your leg got well, you'd throw in with us. But with you to do the brain work, we could take a bank every week. These Arizona banks ain't never had a real roasting. You're a fool. I wouldn't touch you or any of your boys on a bank job. Now, look, Shut man. Shut up. Give them a couple of hundred for services rendered. I don't want any of you in Tombstone. Head north and go back to robbing stages. All right, Ben. All right, anything you say. Pay him. And that's the end of it. So long. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, let me help you. Where's the dress-up clothes? In the wagon. Good. We can change on the way into town. You feel bad? I don't ride in a wagon when I feel good. Besides, I'd like to see you in skirts for a change anyway. You sit down and I'll hitch up the rig. Now, that's the thanks we get from big-headed Ben Roberts. I'd sure like to hit one of those banks in Tombstone. Open up Mr. Roberts' eyes a little. Maybe we will. Yes, I do. Did you ever hear the name Ben Roberts? Ben Roberts? Sure. He's a bank robber, one in Missouri. Why? He's a patient of mine. He's what? Brought to me by his lady friend. Mr. and Mrs. Tom Whiting, they call themselves. They're dressed like city people. Well, uh, how do you know it's him? Do you know him? 
No, but someone pointed him out to me a couple of years ago. You don't forget a man like Ben Roberts. Well, you sure know. So he's here in Tombstone, huh? Got a handsome wife, about 25, I'd say. Blonde. Well, why'd he come to see you? Gunshot wound in the left leg. Some amateur pulled the bullet out, but he missed the bone splinters. Well, that's just dandy. Roberts is a bank robber, and we got two banks. Did he say where he was staying? American Hotel. I gave him strict orders to go to bed and stay there. I gave him a little something to make him sleepy, just to be sure. Thanks. He's not wanted in Arizona, but you may have done me a big favor. <laughs> favor nothing. I'm saving myself a lot of work if it prevents a bank holdup. Yeah, well, let's hope it does. You say they're using the name of Whiting? Watch yourself, Wyatt. Roberts may have a gang just outside town. Well, that's my hunch, too. I'd feel a lot better about it if Doc Holliday and Shotgun were here instead of in Tucson. Now, I'll see you later. Thank you. Right, Wyatt. Marshal Wyatt, or uh, Mrs. Whiting, Mrs. Tom Whiting. Well, Dr. Goodfellow described you pretty good. Oh, he told you about the accident? Yes, sir. I thought you might want to see us. Well, it's just routine. Dr. Goodfellow reports all gunshot wounds to me. Oh, I see. I don't like to disturb your husband, but I would like to ask him a few questions. Well, he's, uh, he's sound asleep. Couldn't I answer them? Well, I'm afraid not, Mrs. Whiting, but it's, well, it's not too important. I'll stop by later. Uh, no. Uh, we shouldn't ask you to make two trips. I'll go up with you, if that's all right. Certainly. He just wants to ask you a few questions. This is my husband, Mr. Whiting. Howdy, Mr. Roberts. Roberts? That's right. No, Ben, don't. Just throw it down there. You're awful fast to that. Now take it easy, both of you. I'm going to talk to you, but I want to keep it friendly. Friendly? There's no warrant for you in Arizona, Mr. Roberts. Dr. Goodfellow says you need a lot of rest and medical attention. You mean you're not going to bother us? Just one question. Any of your gang hanging around Tombstone? No. That's the truth, Marshal. All right. You stay here as long as you need to. Hope that leg of yours doesn't give you too much trouble. You're a new kind of John Law, seems to me. Mr. Roberts, I'm not interested in the scalp money. But if a Missouri sheriff, United States Marshal, comes along with a warrant for you, I'd have to help serve it. In the meantime, rest easy. You play it on the level with me, we'll get along fine. Mr. Herb! Mr. Herb? Yeah? Mr. Herb, I just got a message for you from the Tombstone Bank. Mr. Kenton says there's a suspicious character hanging around. Right. Excuse me, folks. Seems like we have a little bank trouble. Jake Birch? There's only one way to find out for sure. Go right over there. That no good thief. Just when we had everything fixed with the marshal. Now he'll think we're lying to him. I better take a gun. No. Just make sure it's Birch. There's easier ways to skin a cat. Well... You better douse your bandage again. I'll be right back. Excuse me, mister. You 
calling me, Marshal. Yeah, you're, uh, you're a stranger in town, aren't you? That's right. There's no crime in that, is there? Yeah, there might be. The bank doesn't like strangers hanging around its front door. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Marshal. I'll, uh, I'll be moving along. Just a second. What's your name? Uh, John uh, Smith. You have anything on you to prove that? Uh, no, I uh, don't believe I do. Where's your horse? Right over there. Would you like to see it? Yes, Mr. Smith, I would like to see it. Buckshot, Dustin. Mr. Smith, take off that bedroll. Take it off yourself. I said take off your bedroll. Put it on the ground, open it up. What are you doing with a detailed map of Tombstone? Afraid you get lost? Yeah. Well, Mr. Smith, you've done nothing that I can hold you for. You seen anything of Ben Roberts lately? Roberts. Ben Roberts. No, I'm afraid I don't know any Ben Roberts, uh, Marshal. You know, you surprised me. Oh, why's that? I didn't think Roberts would let a clumsy fool like you case a bank. Now, I'm going to give a description of you to all my deputies. Next time you're seen in town, you're going to get hurt. And by next time, I mean any time after five minutes from now. Move. Marshal had just ordered him out of town. I think we ought to turn Birch and his crowd in. Show up their camp. You ought to be going too easy on Jake. I ordered him to stay out of Tombstone, remember? No, we're going to encourage Jake to go against that bank. And then tell Earp? Yeah. Earp will blast them all to little pieces. What if he doesn't believe us? Make him believe us. That's your job. Now, honey. I'm quitting. As soon as I'm well, we'll go to California. Oh, my darling. Oh. We can't have Birch cashing in on my name, calling himself and his cheap outfit the Roberts Gang. You see why Earp has to wind him up for us, don't you? And go convince him. <sighs> Marshal Yes? I'd like to talk to you, please. Won't you come in? I don't like jail. Well, I can understand that. Why don't you sit down, then? No, thanks. I followed you and saw that man in front of the bank. Huh? You, uh, couldn't by any chance identify him. He's Jacob Birch, a cheap stagecoach bandit. The only time he's gone against a bank, he made a mess of things, killed a lot of people. Jake's going to rob one of your banks, maybe tomorrow. Which one? The uh, Arizona Bank or the Tombstone? I don't know, but I'll find out. And then you'll uh, tell me about it? Yes, sometime tonight. Why? Why would you tell me? Because this isn't our idea. Ben's quitting the business. We're going to California as soon as he's well enough. Please, try to look at it our way. We don't want to get blamed for this. We'll never have a chance to make a life for ourselves with 
Jake Birch robbing banks and calling his crowd the Roberts Gang. Don't you believe me? Well, Mrs. Roberts, it isn't too logical. Now, why do we have to gain by telling you about Birch? All right, let's leave it this way, then. You find out all you can about Mr. Birch's plan. I'll meet you at Dr. Goodfellow's office tonight. Around 10 o'clock? That'd be fine. You still don't believe me. You better make up your mind to, because not believing me may cost a few lives. Maybe your own. Oh, you're just talking to make noise, Jake. The truth is, you're afraid to take that bank. I think maybe you're scared of Wyatt Earp. That ain't the hitch, Joe. Well, what is then? Ben and Sadie Roberts. Oh, now, Ben Roberts is laid up with a bad leg. And what do you figure Sadie can do? She can use a gun. And so can Ben if he takes a notion to spoil our party. Oh, well, what do you say, boys? Think it's worth taking a risk? Oh, it's just Sadie. Hold him. We changed our mind, Jake. We want in on the bank job. What bank job? Don't play dumb with me. You cased the Tombstone Bank this morning. Ben was real sore when he heard about it. But then we got to thinking. Come into town on your own and you're in trouble. Use Ben's plan and you'll get rich. What do you say, Jake? Ben Roberts really knows how to take a bank. All right, Sadie. You got something to offer, you're in. For a fourth of what you take. I say we deal. All right. Ben drew a diagram. Wrote it all down for you. I will use what Ben calls his covey a quail idea. You drift into town one by one just before daylight. You're there at 9 o'clock when the bank opens. Grab the money and scatter in the six different escape routes you put down here for you. Then you bunch up again at this camp. Divide the money, scatter again. Understand? Wait, wait. Uh, why do why do we hit the tombstone bank? Because Earp knows you cased it. He'll think you're bound to take the other one, the Arizona. She's right, Jake. Earp will be watching the other bank. Yeah. Yeah, I'll smarten himself. All right, Sadie. We'll hit the tombstone bank five minutes after nine in the morning. Meet you here at noon our share. Now, don't lose that. Any plan Ben thinks of is worth 5,000 cash before the vault doors even open. So, Earp will be watching the Arizona. Right around the corner from our mark. Boys, I'm making just one change in Ben's plan. Now, there'll be a crack shot on the roof of this building. Right here. Take care of Wyatt before we hit the bank. Now, all the logic is against it. She and Ben just have to be the brains behind this whole thing. And I'd be a fool to trust her. Wouldn't I? Wouldn't you what? Miss Sadie can't possibly be telling the truth. Well, now, she might and she mightn't. If you want my advice, do what the cross-eyed tomcat did. Oh, what's that? Watch both rat holes. Divide your men between the tombstone and the Arizona. Yeah, well, that should be her. Am I very late? Oh, good evening, young lady. Oh, hello, Dr. Goodfellow. Well, I went over the whole plan with Jake Birch, and he's going to hit the tombstone bank five after nine in the morning. Now, why would he do that? He knows that I know that he cased that bank. So he figures you'll think he'll be the other one. I had a hard ride to get this, and I'm tired. And if you don't believe me, just say so. I'm sorry, Miss Sadie. Look, I've done all I can for you. Go ahead. Let Jake make a fool of you. Now, hold on. Put this on your husband's leg. Keep the bandage moist with it. Thank you. You're no fool, but you keep on trying, and she'll be right yet. Meaning what? I think she's telling the truth. She can't be. I checked both banks today. The Arizona has twice as much cash on hand as the other. 
Besides, Ben Roberts is never one to settle for half when he can get the whole thing. Well, you can watch both rat holes. No, I can't. With Doc Holliday and Shotgun out of town, I haven't got enough deputies. If I split my force, I'm giving Birch too much of an edge. Now, you just stick to doctrine and let me handle the bank robbers, huh? It'll be the Arizona Bank. <laughs> Resistance. I don't want any dead heroes. We'll catch them as they come out. Your safe open? Yes, uh, but don't you think I ought to close it? Maybe they'll be satisfied with the teller's money. I'll well, just make you open the safe. Now, you stick to the plan. Well, just as you say. Get at it. No shooting until Joe gets served. It's almost time now. Let's go inside and pretend we're uh, going to deposit some of this money. No, you don't, Mr. Earp. I'm thankful that it turned out the way it did. Was that Jake Birch? Yeah. Who got him, you? No, I think it was your husband. Oh, no. What, what Dr. Goodfellow gave him strict orders not to get out of bed. Well, now, he can stay in bed and get well. 
You say for me that I'll be by to speak my thanks to both of you. I'll go ahead and say it. I picked the wrong bank. Well, we can't be right all the time, any of us. How bad is he? Looks like it's mighty near the heart. Can you save him? If I can, I'm a great doctor. If I can't, he'll die. You can be right and get killed. You can be wrong and get lucky. Now, let's see how we both come out. Xin chào mọi người đã quay lại với kênh hướng dẫn tô tranh của mình. Hôm nay thì chúng mình sẽ cùng nhau tô bức tranh bác tiến sĩ và hai Fra đang cùng nhau chạy bộ nhé.